Stop Edmonds, President of the Scott Joplin uh, every morning after Amtrak has already come through today uh, for the 10th annual Ragtime Festival. Um, I would like, first of all, to introduce uh, Mayor Steve Gus of Sedalia, Missouri. Uh, Steve? Welcome to Sedalia. It's one of those wonderful times when I not only get to welcome the people of Sedalia to start enjoying our old heritage, but I have the chance to welcome so many guests from in, indeed around the world uh, to come to Sedalia to celebrate our heritage. We have a lot to learn from you. you I, just in two conversations this morning, I have learned more about some of the, the aspects of Sedalia history than I had learned since I've lived here. It's an exciting time. It's a time, a time when we can share something that we have in common. I, I want to welcome you as neighbors. I want you to feel as though you are a part of Sedalia for your stay here. That extends to anyone in city government. It extends to those, those people who you can identify as native Sedalians. We want you to feel at home here and to continue to come back to celebrate our heritage and what we share in Scott Joplin. Uh, to you folks in Sedalia, let's uh, be like me this year and try to attend as many of these events as you possibly can because every year I learn more about my community, our community, and, and what Scott Joplin was all about and how it made our community what it is today. So welcome neighbors. Thank you for attending and coming to Sedalia. We want to be as gracious a host and as, as uh, uh, productive a host as we can be, so let us know how we can help. Thank you very much. All right, we'd now like to welcome and recognize those who have played a vital part in this festival history. Would please, first of all, all participants in the past since 1974 today of the board and, and act members locally, please stand up and be recognized. Are you here? Good. Thank you all very much for being a part of our heritage. Um, now, I'd like to recognize corporate and community leaders. First of all, Bob Mason, Union Savings Bank, sponsor of the Maple Leaf site. Is Bob here today? Well, he's at the bank. <laughs> uh, Gary Nowak and David Embry of Pepsi, who not only are sponsors of the Ragtime Dance, but also sponsors of a very successful artist in residence of Glenn Jenks here this uh, winter and spring. Uh, an excellent three, two weeks that he spent here with the students of our community. Thank you very much, Pepsi. Uh, Bob McDonald of Third National Bank, or anyone from Third National Bank, please stand up. Sponsor of the Entertainer Concert. Also, Tom Alderman, Adderman, excuse me, Best Western, Headquarters for our, again, a very excellent headquarters and also sponsor of the Ragtime Music Hall concert. Now I'd like to introduce Annette Bridges of the Department of Natural Resources who would like to make uh, a presentation. Uh, Natural Resources, of course, uh, directs the uh, now historic site of the Scott Joplin House in St. Louis. Annette? Speaking personally, this is not my first time at the Sedalia Ragtime Festival. I always have an excellent time. You people really know how to throw a party. <laughs> and officially, I am here representing Mr. G. Tracy Meehan, who is the director of the Department of Natural Resources. The Scott Joplin House State Historic Site in St. Louis is a part of the State Park and Historic Site System. Mr. Meehan, unfortunately, had to be out of the state, but he did send his greetings, which I'd like to, to read for you now. Dear friends, it is a great pleasure for me to extend to you the congratulations of the Missouri Department of Natural Resources upon the occasion of the 10th anniversary Scott Joplin Ragtime Festival. It is to the credit of both your foundation and the people of Sedalia that this creative genius is honored annually for his outstanding contributions to the culture of our state and the nation. 
After we further develop the Scott Joplin State Historic Site in St. Louis, we will look forward to making common calls with you in this important cultural mission. I am sure that the future will offer many opportunities for mutually beneficial undertakings to promote the commemoration of both Scott Joplin and Missouri's ragtime heritage. In the meanwhile, congratulations on 10 years of successful ragtime festivals. Yours very truly, G. Tracy Meehan. I'd also like to add a thanks to the media, which this year includes public television and public radio. Thank you very much. And also, I'd like to thank sponsors, the Missouri Humanities Council and the Missouri Arts Council. Now, Dick, Dick Zimmerman, let's get this festival on the road. since I started out as musical director in 1974, and uh, I should mention that uh, just recently I had the opportunity of speaking with Larry Melton, who was the uh, sort of the head of the festival for the first two years, and he certainly wishes us well. Uh, David Rafkin, David, did you have a couple of uh, things? I'd like to invite, before I tell you about some of the exciting things that we have this year, uh, David Rafkin from uh, San Francisco to read a couple of messages for us. If you were here in 1983 with the postage stamp commemoration, some of you may have met one of the last uh, living relatives of Scott Joplin, his niece, Danita Fowler, who lives in the San Francisco Bay Area. She's 87. She is not of good health, could not make it here, but she did want to send her greetings and still recalls the 83 festival as one of the highlights of her life, getting to visit the people of Sedalia. Also, Larry Melton, as you just heard, I was in San Francisco. He visited for a day. We spent about 12 hours together. I recorded a two-hour interview with him, had quite a talk. And um, I asked him if he would like to send some greetings, and he, he sent a very quick greeting. I wanted to tell, uh, for the benefit of those people who may not be familiar with Larry, uh, the townspeople here, I'm sure most of you remember Larry. Uh, he was the person, essentially, who created this festival in 1974. He put about a year and a half worth of work into it before it started. And uh, that first festival was in July, the end of the month. Sedalia had just come out from under the Ozark Music Festival and get ready to start the Sedalia Festival on July 25th. It was 104 degrees and we had no tent. And we have come a long way since then, but all of this, I believe much of it is due to the, the very hard work of Larry Melton and Karen Melton. And he writes, It is a joy to send greetings on the occasion of the Scott Joplin Ragtime Festival's 10th season. I must admit that the memory of the actual first event is blurred. It was a very busy time. But the joy and beauty and inti intimacy of the music and all the wonderful, tireless, and talented people who came and made the first year happen is still fresh in our minds. That experience has enriched our lives, and we are grateful to have shared that special time with so many giving and caring people. We congratulate those who have faithfully continued to produce these festivals and bring the spirit of ragtime to a new generation. As you enjoy this weekend, celebrate Scott Joplin's life and the music he gave us. It is one of America's great treasures, and it all began in Sedalia. Larry and Karen Melton. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. I remember coming to Sedalia and meeting with Larry uh, before that first festival and uh, talking about my role as uh, producing the, the, the music. And uh, I'll never forget the story that appeared in the Sedalia paper. There was my picture, and it said, Hollywood promoters to produce music festivals. And it sounded like some shyster uh, you know, promoter was coming into Sedalia. But uh, I think we've come a long way since then. Well, this, every year I stand up here and I say, you think last year is good. Well, you won't believe what we have this year. Well, let me tell you. If you think last year was good, you won't believe what we have this year. We really have some wonderful surprises. You will see in your schedule a number of things. 
you will see that we have expanded the number of hours of actual music. We've added concerts every afternoon at Liberty Center, each one unique. And let me tell you about these. Uh, these will star a number of the featured performers here at the festival. The first one, which is at 3 o'clock today, is the Cradle of Ragtime. It is the tribute of all of the performers here, tribute to the music of Missouri, to the composers from Sedalia and from all over Missouri who gave us ragtime in its very early forms. And throughout the years, some of the finest rags were written here in Missouri. So this is a concert of Missouri ragtime. Now, tomorrow is going to be a tribute to Scott Joplin. This was suggested last year when Max Morath did a beautiful program of Scott Joplin music. He said, why don't you every year have a program entitled The Legacy of Scott Joplin, which is devoted entirely to the music of Scott Joplin, done in as creative a manner as it is being done by people. So this is a, going to be a very special concert. And finally, on Saturday afternoon, there's a concert called Ragtime of the Future. And Ragtime, although it was written in the 1890s, it is being written today. And there are fine composers writing Ragtime today. And there's so much good Ragtime that we felt that uh, it really deserved to have an entire concert devoted to the many beautiful, great rags being written by composers today. And many of those composers will be playing their own works. So these are three very special concerts that we're adding. Uh, we have a very big surprise for you. A gentleman who was not announced, and he has not been announced until now, we are adding to our bill. He will be on the concert tomorrow evening. And this is Ireland's foremost ragtime performer. Yes, there is ragtime in Ireland due to the efforts of ragtime Bob Dart. And we have direct from Ireland, a gentleman by the name of Calm O'Brien. You'll have a chance to hear him in Irish ragtime tomorrow. I should mention that Ragtime Bob Darch, who was built to be here and wanted to be here, was prevented from coming by the management of the hotel where he is playing in Pennsylvania. And he had previously signed a contract to play with them. They gave him permission to attend our festival, but unfortunately, that hotel was sold. The new owners refused to let him out of that contract. So that's what happened, but he is looking forward to being with us next year and wants to sign the contract with us before he signs it with them, so to make sure he'll be here. So he said to, by all means, extend his uh, apologies for not being able to make it, but it's just one of those things. But I know you will love to see Colm O'Brien, uh, one of their important announcements, one of the very important forces behind the Scott Joplin Festival is the Scott Joplin Club. These are boosters of ragtime and the festival and Scott Joplin here in Sedalia and all over. The Scott Joplin Club is having a reception, a party uh, this evening, I believe, at 6.30. And I wanted to tell all of the performers, all of our ragtimers, you are invited. You don't have to be Scott Joplin Club members. The, the members would like to meet you. So please, if you are one of our featured performers, please drop by and um, play some tunes if you want to. Uh, meet some of the nice people in the Scott Joplin Club and help make this festival possible. It's going to be at the Best Western, not at the Convention uh, Center or at the Exhibition Hall. It'll be at the Best Western at 6.30, so all of you performers can remember that, all right? Uh, right now, I'm not going to talk anymore except to tell you that uh, we have a very, very special surprise, which we're not telling you about, as the finale of tomorrow evening's concert. It will be quite historic. So you're in for a treat there, and uh, a lot of treats during this entire festival. But right now, to sort of officially get us started, I would like for you to hear one of the wonderful pieces of ragtime that we've written right here in Sedalia. To tell you about it, I'd like to introduce from St. Louis, Mr. Bob Alt. We'll hear Bob today. This is a piece that uh, was a collaboration between Scott Joplin and Arthur Marshall, uh, written while they were in St. Louis. It, it finally was printed, in, or rather, it was written while they were in Sedalia, but it was finally printed when they were in St. Louis. Arthur Marshall in 1959 told the story of how this tune got its name. 
they'd written this wonderful rag called, uh, that I've got the name, the Swipe Sea Cakewalk. And they were uh, at Stark's office trying to negotiate the sale of the piece, the, the, all the usual arrangements that Stark made with his composers. And uh, they didn't have a title for it, and they were all trying to decide what to call this piece, and they heard a fight outside. And they went and checked what it was. It was a couple of newsboys. One of them had swiped the other's papers. And uh, it was quite a battle. Well, they, they broke up the fight and took the picture of one of these kids, put it on the cover of the music, and called it Swipesy. So it's the Swipesy Cakewalk. solos. Very talented gentlemen. Ragtime has spread all around the world, and I am also the sort of the head of the Maple Leaf Club, which is the organization that sort of promotes ragtime and keeps it preserved, and we do a little newsletter that goes out every two months, and I'm amazed that we have members all over the world throughout uh, there's Japan, Europe, Australia, and there are people playing the ragtime recording it, composing it all over the world. And representing ragtimers throughout the world is a gentleman who is one of the most highly regarded contemporary uh, ragtime and jazz pianists. He has recorded many fine uh, ragtime and jazz recordings, but he has never appeared at the Scott Joplin Festival. So I know that uh, you would like to meet him. You'll have a chance to hear him play a number of times throughout the festival, but now, to play Scott Joplin's great Maple Leaf Rag, which was uh, dedicated to the Maple Leaf Club on this very site, and which is one of the great pieces of American music, I'd like for you to welcome from Norway, Morten Gunnar Larsen.
the words of Yumi Blake, that's rag time. <laughs> yes. Well, you are in for a treat. Uh, at this point, this is the end of our formal show because we want to keep everything brief, just so everybody understands what happens here. Uh, we don't really book people to come down and play here. This is a complimentary attraction. It's open to everybody, and we invite anybody who would like to play ragtime to sign up. I'd like you to meet the gentleman who is a walking history book about uh, Sedalia, Mr. Frank Mel. Frank, wave your hands right there. Frank is the man right there in charge of this. Now, now, Frank, now let's get this straight. We do have a sign-up sheet, so anybody that wants to play can sign up. And how long is each set? It's 15 minutes, 15 isn't it? 15 minutes. Okay. Now, we would like to encourage not only those of you who are taking piano lessons and learning a little bit of ragtime, but all of our headline performers, we would like to invite you. Pick a time when you have 15 minutes to sit here. It's, it's a big thrill. So uh, the sign-up sheet will be right over there, and you can do this. And this goes today, tomorrow, and also Saturday, doesn't it, Frank? So it starts at 11 o'clock in the morning. Is that generally when it starts? Or, or what is the first? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, and it goes all the way through till about 5.30. So that's a lot of rag time. So we encourage you to do that. Okay. Do you have another? Okay. Now, what we're... Do you have one coming? Oh, no, what? yes. This is a good chance to, for us to... Did you have something more about the, the, the sign-up sheets, Frank? Okay, because we want to let everybody know this. Another feature this year that we have added is the Ragtime General Store. It's a new concept. It's the only store in the world where it's the only thing you can buy in is ragtime things. Ragtime everything. A ragtime dog, a ragtime cat, a ragtime paper, a ragtime flap, whatever you want, you see. But it's on Ohio Street between 2nd and 3rd, right around the corner from the gazebo. And uh, that's where a lot of wonderful things are going to be for sale. Uh, you've got to stop by there because you'll see wonderful recordings, everything in the world. The ragtime store, the gazebo, which is another venue we have added, is just around the corner from that. And in your schedules, you will be seeing the special little spotlight performances there, again with festival headliners. So this is a chance to hear some of these headliners doing a lot more than they have in the past. So remember that we do have that. Uh, we're now going to get the Maple Leaf Club officially underway. And uh, I would like to introduce our first performer again an international visitor, but uh, a friend of Sedalia, a gentleman that has led the ragtime revival in, uh, in, in Europe for many years, and in his native Sweden, he is a very popular performer. So would you welcome from Gothenburg, Sweden, Mr. Peter Lundberg. There he is right here. He will be our first performer, and from then on, it's non-stop ragtime. Thank you, Thank you. Of course, the uh, thing now is to get as many of the other people up here as possible and not be intimidated by the presence of an audience and the stage and all that. So I guess this is the reason why Dick started with me after I played. Uh, nobody should feel bad about going up and do their thing. So I, I just saw him uh, yesterday and whatever I go to play may turn out to be the jet lag rag. If you excuse me, but I start out with what I hope is going to be the Florida Reg, and I think the composer's name is Lowry, I'm not sure, but it's 1904 or something number.
actually, I um, you want another number? Uh, I would like to um, see if we can hide it. Does anybody have a cushion or something that you can put on the piano too? If not, I'll just go on. I'll do a slow number that Jerry Ron Morton composed and made famous because I feel I like to slow down. And it's a poem, it's a tango called The Crave. specifically wrote on all this street music, play as written, don't fake. But he's dead, and I'm getting older, and I'm thinking. <laughs>
I think that should conclude. But we need another cannons coming up, so uh, proceedings won't stop. Do we have the next money line? You have an announcement to make. All right. Um, thank you very much. And um, if you like this, I will be back. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Sylvia Thompson. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a, I kind of help with the festival now and then. So, um, some of you have these little flyers that people have been passing around. A very good friend of mine named Ida Shove decided that she wanted to do something to help with the festival. So she and some of her friends have arranged a lunch, um, drink someplace to get cool, and a, a fashion show and some entertainment. If you want to go someplace to get in out of the heat to have lunch today, it's at 1230. It's at the downtown lounge that's right up the street here at Main and Lamine. It's just a block away. So uh, there's a $5 donation, and it helps to raise money for the Scott Joplin Festival. So if you get hungry a little bit later, tr just trickle on up to Ida's place and uh, have lunch with the girls and something to drink and enjoy a fashion show. Thank you very much. See you later. Folks, you having a good time? We're going to have a good time today. We've got a couple of another announcement we're going to make. We have a walking tour, and the young lady, Miss Faust, is going to make an announcement about the extent of it. You've been hearing Scott Joplin's music, and now we'd like to show you where he lived and where he spent all his time while he was in Sedalia. We have a wonderful opportunity to afford all you people because we have historic tours arranged. We're calling them Summer Strolls. They're about one hour in length, and they include refreshments. Isn't that nice? They're about $2 for any adult, and a dollar for those under age 12. And the people conducting the tours are members of our local high school wrestling team. Isn't that great? These boys. <laughs> These boys are earning money to attend the wrestling camp in Virginia, and one of their fundraisers is doing this tour. And they're having so much fun, and we're learning a lot about our history of our town, a lot of unknown facts. Very, 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 very interesting. Uh, there was a nice write-up in our local paper about this tour. These are three of the wrestlers. There are a lot more. And uh, these young men will just speak to you very briefly and encourage you to Come over and take our tour. We will be setting up back in the corner in just, just a moment, so please come by. We'll be happy to talk to you. We're also selling iced tea and watermelons, but do come for our tours. Hi, I'm Jamie Polk, and this is Chad Jackson and Paul White, and we're the guides on your tour if you want to come. It'd be nice to have all of you out, and thank you. young lady, and I, it's a wonderful tour, and I think you should take it if you have the opportunity. It's very cheap, and you get some food with it. When they talk about food, I'm always interested. We're going to have Bob Holt back. Our regular schedule starts at 11 o'clock, so we have 15 minutes. We thought we'd give you some of the better ragtimers uh, that are still here, and Mr. Bob Holt's going to come back and uh, play a few numbers for us. We want you to stay here. I do another of the uh, Sedalia numbers. This one uh, wasn't published until 1911, but according to my friend Craver Tishner, it's most likely a Sedalia composition from about 1900 or so. It's uh, a collaboration between Scott Hayman and Scott Joplin called Something Doing.
going to do one more before turning it over to another of our performers. The, uh, this one comes from uh, New York in 1910, written by a fellow there, quite active in the scene, named Ford T. Dabney. It's called The Georgia Grind.
Here's another rag that's clear from the East Coast. It's called the Palm Beach Rag by Lucky Roberts from about 1914. Palm Beach Rag. Three rags that were either written in Missouri or 
written for Missouri, and my first one is called Mashed Potatoes. It was written by C.L. Wolsey, who was a doctor who lived in Bramer, Missouri. Thank you. 
client by playing the musician, and I don't you think she's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. 
is on high. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm Dr. Bob Edmonds. I'm president of the foundation. For those who don't already know, uh, welcome to the festival. And I know uh, you've already, if this afternoon is any example of the sophistication of what this year's festival is going to continue to be. Uh, if you were at the afternoon concert, uh, we have a lot more in store for you. You are our special friends, and we welcome you specially, because as it says in the back of this Get brochure, we can't produce this festival without you. And thank you very much. For those of you, for those of you that have some special memorabilia that come with your level of membership, if you will check at the Ragtime store downtown during the course of the festival, we'll see that you, eat, that you get your memorabilia. I know there's been some confusion about that, and I'm sorry about that. Um, if you also notice that uh, in, in getting these brochures, that, and if you notice what's hanging up around the area, that we are seeing more involvement of business and industry membership levels and sponsorships and we're very pleased and thank you that are here that, that are part of that. Now, we have, as, as the schedule goes, until about 8 o'clock, if there's any more ragtimers that would like to get up here and play until that time, uh, I guess you can play after that time, but don't miss the opening of the 8.30 show at the Exhibition Center because it begins with the, uh, with the ragtime orchestra that that has gotten so much enthusiasm that believe it or not, we had to turn away performers. We didn't have room for all the performers who wanted to play this year. And that will be conducted by David Refkin. And if you can remember the very first one, it was a delightful surprise as to how well it sounds. So let's don't be late for the evening's entertainment. Enjoy yourselves very much in our community for this weekend. Have a good time and uh, come back next year and bring more money. <laughs>